Now, President Aoun said it was only last month that he found out about these explosives being stored in the warehouse in the port behind me. They've been there for six years. He said he ordered people to do something about it and no one obeyed his orders. So, in other words, it isn't really his fault. He also said no international investigation. It could have been foreign interference. That's a dog whistle. It means trying to blame Israel. But all the evidence so far suggests that this was gross incompetence and negligence. Now, it's an open secret here that Hezbollah, a militant organization backed by Iran that is also part of the government, largely control the port. Now, their leader, Hassan Nasrallah, went on television today. He said, that's not true. We don't control the port. He said, we don't have any arms depot there. It's really not our fault. And he said that this incident had been subject to political manipulation political exploitation. Now, the people I've been speaking to today don't look at it by that, like that. They say it's more like exploitation of the people by the politicians. It took only a few seconds to destroy Mar Mikhail Street. But how long will it take to clear the wreckage and rebuild? And how long will it take to remake Lebanon? So it's people the people who are shoveling and digging and sweeping can have faith in their leaders. There's something frenetic about the energy here, as if people are finding a way to channel their fury. Because it's not just the lives that have been lost, as if that weren't bad enough. But what about these young people's futures? They can now see the rot at the heart of Lebanon's political system. This was your shop? Well, the windows, or they blow inside. I think if I was here, if I were here, I could die. Cynthia Raful opened her jewellery shop in 2006. It's a war. In one second, they destroyed all the city. Her family left Lebanon for France during the civil war of the 1970s and 80s. We came back and we built, after the, the war, everything. What do you feel about the government and the people who are in charge? We have to erase them. Erase them. I, I think it's... Uh, I will be very, very rude, but uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we have to kill them. That may be metaphorical, but the anger is real. They're singing that Lebanese of all religions are united and down with the regime, a chant that was popular next door in Syria. A few streets away, it looks like Syria, like Aleppo or Idlib. That's where Ahmed al Haj al Staifi fled from eight years ago. He thought his wife and four daughters would be safe in Beirut. Only two daughters are alive today, one in intensive care. The other children and his wife were killed in Tuesday's explosion. Syrians who fled conflict, Lebanese pitched back into scenes from their war gone by. Down at the port, divers are looking for the bodies of those who may have been blasted out of ships at anchor. They're trying to see if anyone is buried beneath the mountain of grain that was ripped out of the country's main silo. There's not as much as there might have been because the government hadn't got round to purchasing a strategic reserve. Last night, riot police confronted a few angry demonstrators. The streets around Beirut's Martyrs Square were full of tear gas. More protests are planned for the weekend. After the cleanup, the reckoning.
Now, political power here is divided between the different religious groups. That's how they stopped the civil war here 30 years ago. And it's worked. It's kept the peace. But it doesn't work anymore because it's led to this corruption. And that's what people I've been talking to say. It has to come to an end because it doesn't benefit the country. It just benefits the warlords, the people who hold the power and use it to their advantage. But no one knows how they're going to change to a new and better system.